Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Tulip Tribe collaboration. I'm glad you could join us. People will be sneaking in as they discover it's three o'clock and it's time to get started. We're here. We're ready for you. We've got a full house. In the studio with me is teacher Carolyn and teacher Marisa, both of them in. They're watching YouTube, they're watching Facebook, they're reaching out to you. And so type in your questions. They'll be verbalizing it to me so that we can answer it live. Then joining us in the virtual world, we have Susie and Caledonia. They're both here greeting you and saying, hey, glad you could join us. Be sure to introduce yourself. Type in your tulip if you're part of the tribe. Make sure and let us know where you're from so that you can all get to know each other because this is an opportunity for a collaboration amongst all of us. It's not just me, although I'm the one that gets to play with flowers. Look at this. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways for a bigger picture. If the comments are in the way, give it a swipe and that'll put it in silent mode so you just see the picture. If you go vertical, it puts the comments at the bottom. So you have lots of choices. If you're on your computer, go full screen. Get the full picture. If you're watching me on YouTube, maybe you have it connected to your TV for the larger than life. It's kind of overwhelming. Today, we're talking about healing and comfort with flowers. Ways to provide a little bit of flower therapy for yourself, for your customers, for your friends and family, for the world. Flowers are healing. There's so many different things that really make it better. We've got some great flowers today. I thought I would start with some foxglove, because I don't think we've used these on live yet. So I was going to do a little bit of the foxglove, also known as digitalis. Isn't it beautiful? It's garden flower. I love the way it just drapes and the curvature of the stem. It's a lovely, lovely blossom. I'll be working with several different designs. I thought I'd start with something Ikebana influenced, that linear look, and then turn to something with a little bit more tradition. These are my um, vintage Fiesta wear. These two were my mother-in-law's that she gifted me. This one was gifted to me by student Amanda, who has now started collecting her own Fiesta wear. It's kind of addictive once you start with it. And the lavender, this is the only piece I have in that hue, and it's just grand. I absolutely love it. And it pairs so well with the cobalt. I love it. So I'll be working with those a little bit later. I have some surprises planned for you, but let's get started. Now, if you've done basic floral design, you know that we do include a bit of the Asian influence in design. We don't pretend to teach Ikebana. That is a science and art all of its own. And to be an Ikebana master takes years. So we teach the westernized version of the influence of Ikebana and the influence of the Asian style of design. I'll be working with this big slate tray. This is a vase that I bought many, 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 many years ago. It's one of my favorites. It has a Kinzon on the inside, so no foam needed. It's just got the needle, the pin cushion in there. And you can place the flowers then and let them just do their own thing. While I pick which bloom I want to use, Marisa, Carolyn, what's going on out there? Well, Priscilla on Facebook says she loves Fiesta wear. It's from West Virginia. I don't know if you had said that, but... <laughs> I did not know that. You know, my mother-in-law collected Fiesta wear all through the 40s, 50s, and forward. And they live out in the country in Indiana. So whenever there would be estate sales, there would be huge cases and boxes of Fiesta wear because it wasn't a collectible then. And when she passed away, she owned every single piece in every single color, except for the turquoise onion soup bowl. So those of you that are collectors know that the turquoise onion soup bowl is 
not very um, abundant and it's actually quite expensive and that was the one piece that she never had but she had every single piece multiples of most and it was their regular dinnerware that they used for dining and it was really kind of special it made me feel good to end up with a few of her pieces now I love the way this curves and when you're working in a linear design those of you that are students of basic know that you have to analyze the line and the form of the flower and how it moves so that you know which way it needs to exist. And if you're a student of Ikebana, you know that the first placement goes up through the top and it represents heaven. And it's slightly off center. You never want it to be perfectly straight, but it's slightly angled. So I cut and I think and I'm planning and I go, well, I think I want it about here. And I give it a cut and then place it in. And I think I'm going to wish it was a little bit taller. I think I cut it a tiny bit shorter than I wanted it to be. But that's where it is. So that's the way it's going to be. So that's my tall one, slightly to the side, not straight up and down. Straight up and down would be right here. And then it has that graceful curve which takes it out. And when I think about therapeutic and healing and comfort of flowers, I often do think about analyzing the lines and the movement and how the stem relates to the vessel and to my own heart. So by having this rise up, it's the starting point. Then I bring in the next stem, which will come off to the side, and the last stem down towards the bottom. And you could do the same type of flower. I could add in another of the foxglove and have that come out to the side. Or I could switch to a different bloom. I can think about what I might want. Peony would be beautiful, but it'd be too heavy over here. Might be better down towards the bottom. So you kind of analyze where you place everything and you think about it and go, hmm, what stem do I need? What stem do I want? I could even go to another stem. This is clematis. Thinking about placing clematis in, bringing it out to the side, slightly forward, angled, representing man. So I have heaven, man, and then coming in at the bottom with the peony representing earth letting it come outward more towards the front and lower. So once you get those in, the three stems representing heaven, man, and earth give you a meditation point. And you really can look at the lines, think about the placement, analyze each individual stem how it relates to the others. Minimalist design to me is very therapeutic. It really lets you sit and meditate and think and plan. It gives a little bit of a sanctuary to your environment. So I've got a starting point there. Now I'm going to keep designing. I'm not going to stop with just three because you know what? You can never have too many flowers. So while I'm looking to pull out some other things, what else is going on out there? I'm seeing quite a bit of tulips out there, Leanne. We have um, both Sharons and David, Terry, Renee, Denise, Jim, Beatrice, Wendy, Annalise, Ewa, Kathleen, <coughs> excuse me, Andrea, ja Janet, and Debbie, and shout out to her dad because it's his 90th birthday today. Happy birthday, 90 years. That's pretty exciting. Can you imagine? I bet you didn't think you'd be living during a pandemic and celebrating your birthday isolated style. 90 years, you've been through a lot. You've seen a lot. You've watched the world change. And here we are in a very odd spot, very odd spot. So I've added some Gaelic down at the bottom just to start filling in, adding a little bit of movement. I could come back, maybe add some lily grass. 
And what I'm doing is report, repeating my placement. So I had heaven, man, and earth. Now I go back and add accenting materials to give myself a little bit of movement with heaven, man, and earth. Maybe make that a little bit shorter. It's coming in higher than I want it to be. Bring it down here. And I did two Gaelics and two lily grass. Use many times when we're taught floral design, they say, oh, don't use one. Never use one. One, one, one. It kind of works. And they say, oh, never do two. You can't do two. Well, there's two and two. And it kind of works. It makes me feel good. What else is going on out there? Well, we've got quite the international crowd again on YouTube, spanning from Romania, Canada, the U.S., and New Zealand. We've got Kitty, Gloria, Ginger, Tomasi, S.B. Khan, Mar Marmac is with us, Vicki, Elaine, Teacher Michelle, Angelique, Elizabeth, and Angela. Oh, and Janet just joined us. Welcome to you all. I'm so glad you could join us for this hour of collaboration. We're thinking about the healing qualities of flowers and how they give us all comfort. Again, twos. So you can see adjusting my use to bring in things that allow me to focus on the negative space, the open areas, that allow me to see each and every bloom allows me to see the elements and principles of design. So those of you who have done basic and advanced, you did this in basic. You might have done it with iris. You might have done it with gerberas. Probably didn't do it with foxglove, peony, and clematis because we wouldn't always have those things. But you can. You can design at home using any flower, any time, any way. And you just want to think about what are your angles, how do you keep it open and airy and minimal? How do you get each stem to actually make a statement and do what needs to be done all by itself? Now, I've got a little bit more open area here, but I don't really want to add another flower. You know, I've got so many things I could do, but I think if I put a flower in there, would be too busy. So I could put a little bit of moss, for texture, or I could go back and pull out lotus pods and place that down in there. I have to find the perfect little spot for it. There we go. Just nestling them, and I'm going to turn it so that you can see, because I've actually brought those around to the back, because this isn't really just totally one-sided. It's meant to be viewed primarily from the front, but also to bring interest throughout so that you can enjoy it from all sides. You can see how each of the elements and principles are here. Each portion of the design filled in. You can bring in one more pod and go to three, except that one's too big, so I'm going to cut it down. Leah, um, Judy is asking if you got your hair cut, and if David did it, and if he's taking appointments. I love it. <laughs> Judy, yes. I had my third isolated stay-at-home haircut because I like my hair short. I like it above my ears. I hate it when it goes over my ears. And so it was down over my ears again. And I was like, oh. And so yes, yesterday, David cut my hair again. I told him he's getting to be quite a good stylist at this, um, saving me a pretty penny. I do look forward to the day I can go back to the beauty shop and have my hair done. But in the real, really world right now, He's doing a pretty good job. What do you guys think? Do I get bonus points for my haircut? But yes, David did that. So thank you, David. I know you're watching today. Um, I have cut his hair because it, I just shave it bald. 
I have done that for years and years and years. So now we're trading to where I do his and he does mine. I do his, he does mine. I do his two times a week. He does mine every three or four weeks. But yeah, so yes, it is. So I'm going to stop there because I don't want to overthink this. But I want you to think about how you can take just a few items and create a meditation design for yourself. Sometime when you need comfort, sometime when you need a little bit of flower therapy, taking three blooms and representing heaven, man, and earth, filling in with accent materials, covering your mechanics, and then leaving it open and airy, letting the space speak to you, giving you room for your thoughts to go around, and then watching the flowers, it goes through the life cycle. That's part of the meditation process. You can do smaller things as well. I grabbed this little one. Again, it's just a slate vessel. It has the kins on inside. Because sometimes you don't even have to have three of something. It doesn't have to be the Ikebana influence. It can be strictly a study. So taking Maybe one perfect poppy pod. That nice round form. I love round things. And poppy pods, that color is so good. The color, the form, the texture, the interest. It's a perfect meditational material. You can just look at it. And it already starts calming your soul. Accenting it. Maybe with a single succulent. So this is something that's going to last and last and last because poppy is going to dry, succulents hold, and I can just give this a cut, clean it off a little bit, set it in place, and going back with the poppy pod, giving it a cut, setting it in place, anchoring it in there. Maybe a single Gaelic sleeve. Oh, look at that one. So cute and little. Such a great little leaf. So many people are asking where you got those. And if there is, yes, a Kenzon inside. Yes, there is a Kenzon. So those of you that are asking where I got them, I have no idea. It's been so many years. Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. It would have been a floral supplier many, many years ago. Um, I do know that I have seen similar ones done at garden shows where they've used ceramic and then put a Kinzon in it. Uh, it's something you could make your own because it is just a Kinzon and a rock, basically. So if you know somebody who could drill a rock out for you, you could create and it doesn't take very much. You can see how something as simple as one succulent, one poppy, one leaf gives you the look that just makes you feel good. And if you wanted to enhance, taking a piece of lily grass and I'm softening it so that it'll bend even more without any problem. How are you doing that? How am I doing that? So I'm using the back of my knife so it's not the sharp side. And I'm just running it like you would curling ribbon. Then giving this a cut. And then I'm going to just feed it into the Kinzon. Then wrap it around. Just kind of tidy, tucking it underneath because I want it to come around. There we go. And then bring it back up and tying it in a knot because once you've made it so flexible by running your knife along it you can easily wrap it and tie it bring it out so you guys can see how it just kind of wraps around there and then ties in a knot now it's got a bad tip here but you know what i'm going to kind of leave it that bad tip it's kind of brown right there. I'm not positive you can see it, but it's got a little brown on the edge of the leaf. But it picks up the same brown of the poppy pod. And so I'm going to leave it there. 
You know, sometimes those flaws are what makes something perfection. Even though you didn't know it when you started, and you would think, oh, I don't want that to be there. It's the wrong thing. It's, it's dying. But in reality, it's the right thing, and it needs to be there. And that's the way it has to be. So questions, I'll like, move these aside, and we'll get some more things going. OK, this might be a really big question for you to answer, or actually show, but Annalise is wanting to know how the stems are actually placed in there, and if you can show us. Uh, this one? Yeah, I can well, okay. so I have a big hands on. Um, you know, how about if I just use this for a moment? Yeah. Would that work? Okay, so it's a Kinzon, it's not foam, okay? And that's a great question, Annalise, because placement is very important. And as I look at it, this is leaning a little too far forward. It should be back a little bit. There we go. Now it stands up straighter. But the three stems, the first one goes in slightly off center. So you want to bring it in, just leaning over. So center would be right here. You come over, okay. The second one needs to be shorter and comes forward in the foam or in the Kenzon and leans out at an angle, okay. Those of you that have done basic floral design, you know this. You did it. We do teach it both in the classroom and online. So it's nothing new. You know this. But I thought it's kind of a nice way to start live when we're talking about comfort and healing properties of flowers. I thought, let's start with a meditational approach. And Ikebana often is meditational. And even the westernized study and the influence still becomes very meditational. And it's so important to stop and really think about the flowers. The last stem is the shortest jet, so each of them gets shorter, heaven, man, earth. And this one comes to the front, angled outward, and coming down and represents earth. So you have three stems with a central binding point, Notice that it's back, middle, forward. It's not flat, so I'll turn it so you can see from the side. You really want this space in here. You need that dimension. Without it, it would just be a wall, and you don't want that to be so stiff. So the three stems are placed in a radial format, slightly off center, angling, and then angling more each one coming slightly forward. Traditionally, the Ikebana is one-sided because it was meant to sit in a tokonoma, which would be a flat like wall, and it was a tribute. So it was only looked at from the front, and everybody just saw the one side. Now, I made mine all-sided, but you don't have to. Marisa, what else is happening? Okay, so Shelly, who's joining us, um, says, although uh, they are not in the floral industry, but wants to keep their skills up, what is a Kenzon? Ooh, will somebody grab me a Kenzon? And I'll show them. So okay. Kenzons would do alternative mechanics, and we teach that in the basic and the advanced. It's in the advanced, we really go into the alternative mechanics, but um, we introduce it in the basic course and then expand upon it in the advanced course. And some people call them pin cushions or frogs, but it's what we would use before foam existed. You use floral netting and you use Kinzon. And now that a lot of people are going foam free, the Kinzon is becoming more popular again. So um, they'll be bringing one out here in just a second. I saw Carolyn dashing to the shelves to find one. And also, Leanne, uh, Mark Masters is joining us and says that he is sending a student to our school on vacation if we are open. Oh, Mark, thank you. I appreciate that. We plan to open 
on um, September 14th. We've got a class scheduled. We'll only allow six students. We're reducing our class size so that we can spread out even more for social distancing. So if you have somebody that wants to come in September, I know I have two spots left. So they should get registered. If for some reason they can't attend, if travel is stopped, if things don't happen, they can either transfer to the next course in October or transfer to January or transfer online. We'll be quite flexible with options for moving around because we don't know exactly what's going to happen in the world. But we are planning to be open in September. We have bought masks and gloves and disinfectant and wipes and all this stuff so that we will be ready for you. And we're setting up procedures and protocols for safety, um, but we'll be there. So this is a Kinzon. So now that you see it, you probably understand that um, you've seen it before and that they come in different sizes, different shapes, but it is needles or pins and then each stem just goes right in, just like so, and then it supports. Now they're not deliverable in a lot of cases because if it goes out in the delivery van going back and forth, it doesn't have that much support. So they're more used for specimen designing, home designing, or if you go in and do an installation in someone's home where you go in each week and change things out, then you might use a Kinzon. For actual delivery of everyday design, it's not that much uh, user friendly. But they do allow you to really show off a flower because you don't need to cover up all that foam. It also keeps flowers alive for quite well as long as you keep the water around it. So that's your Kinzon. So. And Vicki has a great question. Does it hurt the flowers? It does not. Um, I have not found it to be a problem with keeping the flower alive well. Uh, they seem to do just fine. Yeah, so I don't think you'll have a problem there. Kimberly, uh, or I'm sorry, I think it's Kim, wants to know, uh, I believe she's referring to the foxglove, uh, how long do those last? You know, foxglove are actually pretty sturdy. Uh, they are thirsty, so you need to definitely don't let them dehydrate, keep them filled with water. But if they're with water, they're kind of like a snapdragon, five to six days, something like that. So they're pretty sturdy. And the reason I picked these was I was thinking about what gives me comfort with flowers. What is flower therapy to me? And for many times, it's going back to treasured possessions. Things that just make you happy, that make you think of other people that are important in your life. And so this made me think of Amanda. This made me think of Lucy. And I thought that's very appropriate for this designing time. Because as you design for people, one of the ways you can give them designs that provide comfort is have them bring their own containers in. Say, so do you have something treasured that you would like me to design in? Repurposing, reusing, recycling. So it's also a very eco-conscious design approach to use vessels that the customer may already own. And you can just enhance with fresh flowers. This particular one, I always like to do things that are gonna drape. And the tulips are gonna continue to grow and continue to drape. And this just allows them to show off their own little style, tucking them in, then bringing in the clematis. Carolyn, what's going on? And Joanne has a great question. She's wondering where our classes are held. We're here in Portland, Oregon. We've got um, a wonderful classroom here. We're downsizing so that it will be a lot of social space, social distancing. So we're in Portland, Oregon. And then we're also online with the virtual classroom because many of you aren't able to travel to Portland, Oregon, especially international travel right now is, is quite limited. And so to allow you to continue to learn, continue to grow, 
You can join us in the virtual classroom. Either way, you get full teacher support. Everything we do is fully teacher supported so that you've got a question, you have a teacher to ask. And we're here to answer those questions and make sure that you are able to learn no matter which way you learn best. You know, some people learn by reading, some people learn by watching, and some people learn by auditory. And when we teach, we teach all those ways. We have it written out, and we have it on video so you can watch. We have everything verbalized so that you can hear. And then we have everything hands-on so that you can do so it doesn't matter which way you learn the best, we've got you covered. So even people that have maybe not felt like they were good students in the past, they do well with Flower School because we work with any learning style. Auditory, visual, kinesthetic, we've got them all covered. And our teachers are fabulous at making sure that you really do master it. We have so many great teachers. We are so lucky. Um, those of you that have been to class know we've got Teacher Anna, Teacher Jerry, Teacher Shell, Teacher Michelle, Teacher Carolyn, Teacher Marisa, and then myself too, and David. Because our whole goal is to make sure that you learn whatever way allows you to learn best. Because everybody hears things a little differently, learns a little differently. And if we don't give you the different voices, you might not learn as well as you would have otherwise. So now I've got tulips. I added the focal emphasis with a few extra tulips grouped right in the top, and then the line coming out. I want to exaggerate that line a little more with my lily grass because that will help carry the eye out and over. And you're just lifting and finding a spot to slide this in. There we go. Carolyn. I just wanted to give a shout out to one of our new students, Pam. She has joined us on YouTube today. Hi, Pam. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. It's always nice to see the students in and get to know you better as we're live. Make sure and let everybody know where you're from. Add your tulip in there so that they know you're part of the tribe. And we have, I have more tulips over here on Facebook. We have Maggie and Kathleen. Teacher Michelle is with us. Don Swang, Via, AJ, and Tammy. And then also Colleen, who was an online student of ours from Australia, is now a home-based floral. Excuse me, a home-based floral studio, and is going strong. Hi, Colleen. I haven't talked to you in so long. Nice to see you on live with us. And I'm so proud of you. You did well in class, and now you're doing well with your business. It's pretty wonderful. How are things in Australia these days? It's not it's such a weird time in the world. I'm hoping that you are well and staying healthy and all those things, and that you are flowering your country with style. So I'm just looping this, tying it into knots, and then pulling it tight, and then tucking it in. Because I like the round feel. It picks up the round of the vase. Going through repetition adds rhythm to the design. So filling in with the elements and principles, just making sure that I've got all the elements, all the principles, because that's what makes a design fabulous and it makes it work, and it gives comfort. Flower therapy always includes the elements of principles. I know as silly as it sounds, like, oh no, just fit it in there. No, you gotta have all your elements and principles. What do you think, do you like that one? It's one of my favorites, just simple. Tulips, clematis, lily grass, and the perfect vase. I think I'll set that one aside here and go ahead and do a little coordinating piece to go with that, maybe taking just a couple tulips and setting them in, just letting them rest right on the lip, coming back. Yeah, and I just got a private message, and they're asking if um, they weren't able to come to the basic 
class here in the classroom, but took basic online, could they come here to the classroom and take the advanced course? Ah, you know, there are so many different ways to do this, and we try to make it as easy as possible for you. Because to do the, the basic course, it's three weeks away from the home. And so a lot of people can't take three weeks out of their life away from their family, and yet they want the classroom experience too. So yes, you can definitely do basic online and then come join us in the, cl in the classroom for advanced, because that's just five days. So it's one week away from home, and it works out really well. We have quite a few people who do that, and that way they get the best of both worlds. They get to do the convenience of studying at home, and then the benefit of coming in the classroom and seeing everybody in person. So yes, you can definitely do that. I'm going to go back and add, I want this piece of grass to stay, but it doesn't want to stay. It's wanting to kind of move around. So what I'm doing, just taking a single U-glue dash and placing it onto the leaf. So then I've got a little bit of adhesive that I can bring this around and then just secure it. And that way it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay right where I want it to be and just gives you that little tiny bit of coordination. It gives that feel of the loops but without as much tucked in there. Then doing another little companion piece here. Working in components like this with a number of different things always just makes you happy. You know, it just sort of ties it together. Then if the customer wants the big one, they can. If they can't afford the big one, they can get the little one. Or they might want both of them, which is even better. I mean, a double sale, yeah, good for that. Let's see, maybe do something a little bit different in this one. I've got some tulips. Maybe do all three tulips. Ah, look at the blush on those. They're doing so well. And while I gather some things, Marisa, Carolyn, anything else going on out there? We have someone mentioning that those tulips are quite open. How long will they last? They're not going to last a long time. These tulips are older. Um, I don't remember when I got them, but it's been a while, and they've been sitting in my cooler. But I didn't want to just throw them away because they're still so pretty. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to use them for live. They'll give us a few days of life, but, well, that one's not going to give us any life. That one's done. So, um, yeah, they are not going to last real long, but for the moment, they're kind of perfect. They just sort of work. Except, you know what, those are all falling apart because I'm messing with them too much, so I'm not going to use those. So maybe that one I can use. But these are starting to disintegrate right before our very eyes. So watching through the life cycle, and they're gone, just like that. The hot lights make them kind of disappear quicker. Maybe a little bit of Lysianthus. Picking up that little bit of a ruffle to it. Very lovely. Carolyn, what's going on? We have um, Sherry commenting here on YouTube. She has a shop in Baja, Mexico, and wanted to just spread smiles around her area. So she was selling bouquets that would normally go for 50 pesos for 35 pesos. Ah, so doing a special to make sure that everybody can have flowers in their life. That's good. Because right now, I think we all need flowers. Flowers really are healing. Flowers give comfort. So many of us can't be with our loved ones right now. Maybe we aren't able to travel to wherever they are. And so taking a moment to share flowers when you can't be there in person can be a really wonderful, comforting thing. We have Vega with us from Iceland, and she is saying that she has been so busy selling so many flowers. 
You know, I think that I have heard that from so many people that being florists right now, they are busier than they have been for months and months because people need flowers. They need it in their life and they need that little bit of comfort. So they're buying them for themselves. They're buying them for their friends and they're sharing the flower love. Um, it is a good time to be a florist. It's kind of funny because people were really afraid. We all were afraid as to what does this mean with the pandemic and will we all be going out of business and will this happen and what do we do? And I won't lie, it has been traumatic and scary and hard and for many it's been financially distressing. But the reality is for many it's working out incredibly amazing for their businesses. They're having to do things differently, no contact delivery, extra space with the staff, more safety procedures than we ever dreamed we would possibly need, and just all kinds of changes to our work practices. But what I'm hearing from graduates is it's the perfect time to be going into business it's the perfect time to be selling flowers because people need it, people want it, and the world is wanting to buy direct from the maker, so direct from you as opposed to just online. Online sales are still very important. I don't want to count that down because a lot is happening online, but they're wanting to buy online from someone that they know and trust somebody that they know is going to care and that's where you come in and where they want to buy from you. So I just did a little tiny nosegay, tied it off with bind, bind wire and then just dropped it in. I know Amanda who gave me this cup, she's just getting ready to open her own brick and mortar store. She felt that this was the right time to do that. And I'm so excited and so proud for her because it was a big step to go from studio to a full storefront. And I know she's going to do well. I know she's going to do very well. So that's, that's exciting. Oh, how grand. I'm going to move things around again uh, so that we can do something else. So we've got the tussy mussy, little nosegay tucked into the cup. Just a little bit of leftovers. So two ranunculus, some lisianthus, a tulip. Then this little guy with just two tulips and one stem of lily grass. And then the larger one with clematis, lily grass, and tulips. And yes, they are older, so it is going to be short-lived. But aren't they fun? What else do we got? And we had one last question on the teapot arrangement. Are there any mechanics holding the tulips in the teapot? No, the, um, this particular vessel actually is really easy to work with as long as you work with the movement. So everything is just placed in and then all the stems weaving together so that they're supporting themselves. So there's no netting, no foam, no structure. It's just stems supporting stems and locking it in place. So those of you who have done basic flow design or advanced flow design, when you've worked in a vase and you did your weave and you saw how you start with nothing and then all of a sudden it locks and gives you a strong structure that's fully deliverable, totally stable. And that's what I did here. So it's very, very set. Okay, Leanne, I am going to try to say this comment. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's very touching. Um, so Denna says every Saturday after closing, they try to take um, their leftover flowers to the local laundromat or stores and give them out. Just a brief smile is sometimes the only smile that they get for the day. You know... That is a tearjerker and that is so true. And that is something that we as florists owe the world and we owe it to ourselves to share beauty and share love because for many, that flower is the only bright spot in their day. And we've all been there. We've all had days that we just thought, 
I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can take this. And sharing that single flower gives them hope, gives them comfort, gives them peace, and makes the day a little better. So I am so happy that you're doing that. Knit definitely is a good use of materials to make sure that we do share the beauty. And this is another vessel that I had on my shelf. A friend of mine made it for me. And it's a handmade basket, I guess. It's a, but it's a, it's a, a bowl um, handmade with driftwood that was collected along the coast here in Oregon and Washington. So she would go over to the coast and collect just wonderful little pieces of wood and then lay them out. She had a frame that she would work upon. So she would hold it this way with the frame underneath. And then she would just take one piece of wood and nail it to another piece of wood and nail it to another piece of wood and to another. So it's very time consuming, very tedious. I have a big wreath that I've done, um, that she had made for me with lichen branches. And then I have this one that is just the dish. And this particular vessel, just even all by itself, gives me comfort because of the tactile qualities. It's one of those things you can just set on your table and it just begs you to touch it, to feel it, to become one with Mother Nature. And look at this piece right here. Isn't that a gorgeous piece? That's my favorite part of the whole dish. Sometimes I'll take and just put a single bloom just sitting right in here. Other times I'll set a rock in it. Kind of depends on my mood. Today I thought I'd do something a little more. So I picked up an igloo. If you've done floral school, you know the igloo. It's a cage with floral foam. I've soaked it with water and flower food, so it's already wet and hydrated. And then I can just set that directly in. If I was selling this, I might want to anchor it in. I wouldn't want to glue it, because I don't want to permanently mar. Um, but if I was selling it, I would wire it in place so that then I could deliver it without any problem. But since I'm going to probably take it home, I'm just going to set this right like so. Set it right in there. I'll pick it up so you can see how it just nestles in there. And it could go on this side or it could go on that side. I just kind of work with it to see which way, where does it, ah, that's where it goes. It just sets right there perfectly. So that's where it has to be. Sometimes you just have to pay attention and know that, okay, this is the mechanic I want to use. This is what I want to do. So where does it set? Then when I was gathering my materials, I was like, hmm, what am I going to do? What am I going to make? And I found this wad of mega wire that was just on the shelf. And I don't know what we did with it, but someday we had used this and we squiggled it. Um, might have been Teacher Michelle. That seems like the type of thing she would have done. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And the color picks up this kind of mahogany here. So I thought, well, that's what I'm going to use. And then I think, okay, how does it fit here? And I think I'm going to just kind of, there's an end right there. I'm just going to feed it through and then adjust and then just let it all lay here. Does that show okay? Can you see? So sometimes you just kind of start working and organically you know you have to have a mechanic. This definitely starts a line going through, then I need to hide my mechanic, but I don't want to cover up the whole basket, so I don't want to just go and start putting things in there willy-nilly. So I'm thinking, got a couple of options. It's K, 
kale, ornamental kale. That could be kind of fun in there. The peony could work. So I kind of start analyzing and thinking, okay, what's going to look good? And I like the idea of the kale because it gives me some substance, but I have to think about the fact that it has a very, very large stem. So how am I going to fit that in there and not have it just take over? So I might pull down, get rid of the lower, and then as I cut it, one thing you can do is cut it with a really long slant. See how I got rid of much of the stem that way? So now it's not going to take as much room in the foam. Then I determine, do I want it on this side or do I want it on this side? And it could go either way, but I have to stop and think about it. And I need to remove that leaf, it doesn't work. And then place it in far down into the cage as I can get it. And you've inspired a lot of our viewers here. It sounds like everyone is headed now to the beach to make their own little wood basket bowl thing. <laughs> you know, and you could. Um, it can be done with driftwood. It can be done with mossy branches and lichens. It can be done with birch. You really can do it with so many different things. You could do it with pine cones. So it's just a matter of going out into the great outdoors, gathering more than you think you need. Because it always takes more because you have to find the perfect piece so this one doesn't fit and that one doesn't fit and then you have to keep adjusting. But gather and then just start. And people say, oh, well, I don't even know where to begin. Hammer one to another, and then hammer another one. And let it take an organic form that doesn't have to be precise. Now, as she got better and better, hers became very precise, and you knew exactly what you were going to get. But when she first started, everything was a little more lopsided and haphazard. But you know what? They were equally as beautiful. They still were just stunning. So then I'm going to go try to decide if I want to do the darker pink or the lighter pink. Well, I think I'm going to do, oh my gosh, I can't decide. I think I'm going to do the lighter one. Yeah, that's the one it has to be. I'm going to do two of them so that I can shelter one over the other tucking it in. What else is happening? We have some really great questions on what is the Flower Lovers Club? You know, the Flower Lovers Club, I want to say thank you. So many of you have joined the club and I really appreciate it. The Flower Lovers Club is a wonderful group of people that support the Floral Design Institute, support free education, and, bonus, we support you. We give you five exclusive libraries that are just for you. And they're not open to the public. They're not available on YouTube. They're not open. They're private libraries. We just put a brand new video in the Trends Library with Wedding Trends 2020 because we felt that needed to be filmed post-pandemic because the world has changed. So we went ahead and did a Wedding Trends 2020 for the club members. It's in their Trends Library, so just log in, scroll down to the Trends Library, and you'll find it there. The club videos are much more educational. I always talk about the fact that we're inspirational and we're education. Live and our free videos, that's inspiration for you, and we want to share that with the world. Then we have our educational programs, which are fully teacher supported, where you have access to all your materials 24 seven, and you can pick up the phone and talk to a teacher. You can send off an email and talk to a teacher, but they're there for you. And then the club 
is educational but without teacher support. So you still get education. It's not as in depth as the courses, obviously, can't be, but we try to keep that open for you. We call it kind of the Cliff's Notes version of Flower School. So it's a like Flower School light. <laughs> Yeah. Leanne, excuse me, Leanne, just so you know, um, a few people again just want to remind you that you should consider making the live an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, people. <laughs> I know, and you know, we think about it, and um, you know, we even tried doing three lives a week when the COVID first began, and we felt like we needed to do our part to provide uh, an anchor point for the floral world. And so we were doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I have to tell you, for me personally, it was just too much. Because I try to give my heart and soul, and it was so draining, I just was, I couldn't give enough. Um, so an hour and a half is almost scary to me. It's a little bit daunting, because I think, I don't know if I have that much in me. But I promise you an hour, I promise you that. And who knows, sometimes they go a little long. And um, I will take it to note, though. But I'm not going to do it today. <laughs> so I've got two peonies tucked in. My line, the focal emphasis has begun. You can see how it's all starting to come together. What else is going on? Uh, Janet just wanted to give you a big thanks. She used your hot water trick for dahlias with her backyard hydrangeas. And it worked like a charm. Oh, good. Good, good. You know, just those little tricks and tips that, you know, you learn so much when you're in flower school. All just these things that how to keep those flowers alive. How to make sure that everything holds the way you need it to so that your customer gets the best possible and longest lasting. So now I'm adding a couple of the poppy pods in here. And Tammy wants to know if past students have access to the Flower, Love, Flower Lovers Club library. If you want to be part of the Flower Lovers Club, anybody can join us. It's not limited to students. It's a subscription, so it's $59.95 for the entire year. So it's a great value. And then when you're a member of the club, in addition to the five private libraries, you also get 20% off on all books, supplies, you know, any material good. If you were to order online with us, you get 20% off on that. So it gives you savings, and that is our gift to our club members. So past students, if you want to join the club, it's just a matter of going online. Um, Caledonia and Susie, if you'll put the link in there for the Flower Lovers Club, because that's something near and dear to my heart. Uh, and when you sign up, you actually get an email directly from me with your password and your login information because I personally greet everybody on that. There's a few things that I like to make sure it's me that does it. And so the Flower Lovers Club is usually me. Um, yes, if I'm gone for some reason other than someone else can do it and your teachers are here to make sure that you get in so that you know, if I'm not there, it's going to happen anyway. But I try to do it myself just because I want to see who is out there that's supporting our teachers, our school, and the Floral Design Institute. You know, we couldn't do it without you. So now I'm going to pick this up out of here for a second so that you can see what I have. So I'm undoing that piece of wire that I tucked in, and then I'm just lifting so that you can see. So I created, oh, water. I just basically created a little baby design. Line coming through, focal emphasis, textural interest, little bit, and this pulls your eye up and over and through. Now, my mechanics, they're not concealed, but it tucks down in and it doesn't show, so I don't need to cover this. If it bothers you, you could put something over that. But the reality is when it sets in here and it's nestled, you don't see that at all. So it's not necessary to be covered. It just 
uh, hook that back in, layer this back together, and then I can lift it up and show it to you this way. And you can see how it just gives you that wonderful movement straight through. I want to thank you all for joining me. It's been a wonderful hour, not an hour and a half, but it's been a wonderful hour. We shared the art of design, creating your own vessel, and I do invite you to try it. Be brave, go gather some things. I showed you doing it with more of an Asian influence, something a little bit minimalist. There's lots of ways to bring in comfort with flowers. And then using heritage containers, containers that make you happy, containers that remind you of your history, and maybe having your customer bring in their own special container. And then even just little nosegays, little tussy mussies, in some container that's special. It was a gift from Amanda that just makes you happy. You know, all of these things, they bring comfort, they bring happiness, they bring joy. And right now, that's what we need. Comfort, happiness, joy. We're so thankful for our online students because it allows us to keep teaching. And I'm so thrilled because for you, it's a perfect time to be going into the flower industry. People are buying flowers. Our students are doing so well. They're selling their lessons. It makes me laugh. And then our in-person class starts September 14th. There's two spots left in that class. And the last one of the year will be in October. And I believe that one has four spaces left. Um, we'll be opening very conservatively, very cautiously, with lots of safety procedures and protocols. And we are being very flexible if for some reason you can't join us, if you've registered and then it doesn't work out that you can't travel or whatever, you can transfer without penalty. We want to make sure that everybody can join us for basic design, for advanced design, for the Flower Lovers Club, for live. We'll be back next week. We have more fun planned. I hope that you have a lot of comfort in your life from flowers and invite you to share flowers and provide comfort for others. We saw that comment where they took them to the laundromat. Where do you take your flowers? Where do you share? How do you give comfort? How do you provide flower therapy to your world? I'll see you next week. Have fun and please stay safe, but be sure and do something you love. Bye for now.